Graduate admissions offers have been rescinded or reduced across the United States, including at schools such as Harvard, MIT, Michigan, Iowa State, USC, WashU, UW-Madison, UMass, Cornell, and Berkeley, and at least 30 other programs. If you want to know exactly why this is happening, I would recommend you watch this video here. The one sentence summary is that the Trump administration is pushing to cap NIH research grants indirect costs at 15% and also pushing to increase the endowment tax on universities. Furthermore, the Department of Education has been dismantled, and also there's a currently a, a filtering process going on for NSF grants. Now, understandably, this has caused a lot of uncertainty for universities, and there's been major pullback in the number of admissions, and even some rescinding of offers given to graduate admissions PhD applicants. I'm going to now show you a collection of letters from real PhD applicants who were initially admitted into these PhD programs, but now these letters are saying that their offer is no longer valid and has been rescinded. Furthermore, although I'm a statistics PhD student at Cornell, none of this is a reflection of any official position or statement from the university. Speaking of Cornell, we might as well start here. So this is a heartbreaking letter that was received by a student who had applied to the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at Cornell University, and as you can see it says, At this time we've received an exceptional level of interest and have reached our target class size in chemical biology and biophysical chemistry subfield earlier than anticipated. Unfortunately, this means that we are no longer able to provide the financial support necessary for your attendance at Cornell, and we must withdraw our offer of admission. In an even more extreme example, UMass implemented the hiring freeze, spending freeze, and rescinded all offers of graduate admissions to its biomedical sciences PhD program. Let's take a look at this letter. So I can, as you can see, it says, I hope you're doing well today. I'm writing to share a difficult update. And at the very end, it says, unfortunately, as a result, we must rescind all offers of admission for the fall 2025 term. I think one school that really shocks everyone is the almighty University of Michigan. As you can see in this letter, they say unanticipated federal policies impacting scientific research and education programs in academia, as well as admissions policy changes by many of our peer PhD programs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you'll see that it says, given these extenuating circumstances, we are regretfully withdrawing our offer to you for a place in the 2025-26 PIBS class. This is a letter from WashU, of course, a prestigious school, and they say that I'm writing to share that we have had a higher acceptance rate on our offers for admission uh, to this program than anticipated, and now it's completely full. And they say, I am very sorry to let you know now that your admissions offer is now rescinded. Many of you know that PhDs are usually fully funded, and basically if they're not funded, then they're impossible to pay for out of pocket for five years. And so basically what UW-Madison has done in this letter is say that although your offer is formally still valid, this offer now lacks a funding package, which basically is kind of like a soft rescinding of the offer. I guess one concrete piece of advice here is that if you've been admitted to a program that you like, you should honestly just accept that offer as soon as possible. Because as you can see in this letter, uh, they say that uh, we have made the difficult decision to rescind contingent offers of admission that have not been accepted. So basically, the, it's like a first come first serve sort of acceptance into these programs if you have the offer already. You would think that prestigious institutions such as Berkeley or Harvard would be completely immune to such a funding shock. But as seen by this Reddit post, uh, this political science PhD admit to Berkeley says that uh, they are only guaranteed two years of funding and even that could be pulled at any point. And this seems to be a change across the entire University of California system. So as you can see, the implications of these government changes are quite far reaching and significant, even to these types of institutions. Now in a usual cycle, moving up the waitlist is another way to kind of get into a PhD program, even though if you were waitlisted at first. But the Harvard Faculty of Arts and Sciences Dean wrote an email to all the faculty on Tuesday afternoon that the school will honor existing formal offers of admissions and its financial aid commitments to graduate students, but it's actually going to deny all applicants who are currently on the waitlist. And although many schools haven't made official statements saying that they're taking less students or they're rescinding offers like that, uh, certainly 
basically every university in the United States is feeling some sort of funding pressure currently. So here's kind of a lightning round of distress signals before I tell you how universities are pushing back. So Florida Tech is set to lose 66% of its budget due to the federal funding cuts. The University of Pittsburgh announced on Tuesday that it's going to institute a faculty and staff hiring freeze until July 2025. University of Vermont said that it would pause hiring long-term faculty or postdoc positions for the next two months. Emory is imposing a hiring freeze for staff positions, limiting uh, faculty hiring and a freeze on compensation adjustments. NC State has pulled all hiring activities um, as of February 14th. Stanford has announced a hiring freeze. MIT instituted a hiring freeze. UCSD also is seeing cuts from the money that it gets from the state, so it's announced a hiring freeze. Uh, Northwestern University has imposed a 10% spending cut on all non-personnel expense budgets for the rest of the fiscal year. And there's many more examples. And actually, down in the description below, I have a spreadsheet that I found circulating Reddit for all the graduate admissions situations and reductions news in the United States. So you can check that link down below to see all of the updated lists of the universities that are being affected um, in 2025. But here's how some universities are pushing back. So the Association of American Universities, the American Council on Education, and the Association of Public Land Grant Universities, and 11 other research universities filed a lawsuit seeking the restoration of prior overhead recovery rates. Here is a literal PDF file of the exact lawsuit, which includes Brown, the UC system, Caltech, CMU, UChicago, Johns Hopkins, MIT, and UPenn, just to name a few. And the Attorney General of New York and 21 other states filed a second lawsuit on the same topic. So, I mean, I'll put this down in the description below so you can check it out. And also, here's the other second lawsuit. And somewhat surprisingly, this lawsuit also includes states that voted for the current presidential administration in 2024, such as Arizona, Nevada, and North Carolina. The unfolding graduate admission situation in the U.S. is certainly uncertain in 2025. Um, there's not really much that we have guaranteed other than we basically know that almost all departments seem to be taking less people uh, due to this funding uncertainty. And so basically the, the graduate admissions landscape is quite volatile right now. However, institutions and advocacy groups across the United States are pushing back through lawsuits and public statements seeking to restore the financial stability of research in academia in the United States. If you're a prospective grad student, make sure to stay informed and reach out to program directors to maybe see if anything has updated and I mean if it's possible maybe you can consider alternative funding options. I'll continue tracking this situation and provide updates as they emerge. Um, if you found this video helpful make sure to like and subscribe and send it to someone who might find it relevant and also down in the description below I have a lot of resources uh, that are relevant on this topic. My name is Satija Monagate. Stay strong, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next video.